is probably the fifth leading cause of death in the country. I think it's trying to for free TB uh, in Kenya. Uh, this juncture to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Mashaya Waroingi, the president of Tia Kubrika, which is the Australian Biomedical Research Innovation and Industrial Centers for Africa. Kindly, let's welcome him. Thank you. Thank you so much for the invitation to take what I am very excited to be here. I'm excited because of uh, the power, the force that we have at JQuad itself. It's the University of Agriculture and Technology. Let's say it's a university of technology, right? So I am very happy that uh, you got me this invitation to speak about uh, TB and what we can do about it. One, TB is a technical problem. Right? TB is a technical problem. Getting rid of TB is a technical issue, which requires technology. It could be technology in medicine, technology in agriculture, technology in stuff. But we miss the most important technology, the technology of money. We are saying that uh, if we have to get rid of TB, control it, or even eradicate it, <laughs> We shall need a lot of things. Let us see the, uh, the number of things. See the list of things we shall need. Number one, we need to know characterize the bacteria properly. Because maybe since it was characterized by Robert Koch, we have other things that have happened since that time. That takes research, right? Research takes a lot of money. That is, and the research takes place in universities such as JQuad, right? So, if we do research, we are going to discover so many things. The discovery of those things also requires a lot of money. Where you can see we are struggling right now about TB is because we don't have money for research, we don't have money for discovery, right? So we cannot remove the discussion of money in a Stop TB campaign. Where does this money come from? Number three is that after you've discovered those things, you have to translate them into products, maybe tablets, maybe vaccines, and stuff like that. The work of translation of scientific knowledge is very expensive. It could take even up, up to a billion dollars. Where is a billion dollars going to come from in JQuad? So, and of course, these are issues that we cannot, because we, we can speak about it, thinking that someone else is going to share the money. For as long as we think that someone else is going to share the money, we shall never get at public TV. The bacteria will continue to erode us. So the technology of money is at the center of research, discovery, translation. And final, once the knowledge is translated, it needs to be taken to the market. How do you manufacture a lot of those things so that we can take them to the communities? <clears throat> Manufacturing, commercialization of the research product. I'm sure, quite certain, that here in this JQuad, the people who have discovered things from the research perspective, whether in biology or other areas, to translation of that research, to even think about commercialization and even ramping up manufacturing of those things that would help us to stop TB. But where is the money? Big question. Where's the money? Is it going to come from the Kenyan government? No. Why? Because the Kenyan government doesn't have money. When it needs money, it goes to China. We don't want the Kenyan government to go to China to get us money to finance our translation, commercialization of research. In day what? It doesn't make sense. Because what will happen, Chinese people will come and do that work. Because Chinese people are not going to give us money to pay our people. They give us money to pay who? Their people. As is evidence where? Vika Superhighway. Vika Superhighway built right next to JQuad. No one in JQuad would participate in building it. Even though JQuad is the leading university in civil engineering technologies. Do you see now what money does? <coughs> if we have money, then we are not talking. Then you say, if we have done all these things, we bring them to the communities. We have just heard that uh, Poor people are much more likely to get TB. People living in poor housing conditions, 
people congested, whatever it is, lack of money itself is the greatest contributor to the incidence and prevalence of tuberculosis. If you went to the wealthier nations, you would find that the incidence, prevalence of tuberculosis is much lower. So money matters a lot. And of course, poor people are much more likely to live with animals, you know, and when they live in animals, they can get the TB that comes from the animal kingdom. And of course, the transmission of TB from animal to human is much more likely to happen among people who live among poor conditions. And of course, people without money are much, more, are much less likely to go to the hospital because even the hospital is very far, there's barriers to access. They are much less likely to buy tablets, even if you prescribe them. Because tablets cost money, even if you are going to be given for free, they are much less likely to find the means to access those tablets. So money is the piece that we must never ignore as a nation. And of course, money is a piece we have all ignored. Both from the political sphere to the entire education enterprise, we don't think about money, we say nothing about money, we talk as if money does not matter. We're here to tell you that money matters a lot. Now, <clears throat> we're also very lucky today because money has become disassociated with the government. Traditionally, the government has issued money, has created money in what is known as legal tender. But, lo and behold, we stumble across the scientific money, billion blockchain, right? This made from the university, like this one. So we are talking, what if we created partnership between people who need the money and people who can create money, computer money, computer scientists, and then we figure out how we create money to solve all these problems. From research and development, to translation commercialization, to ramping up manufacturing, to community health development, to preventive education programs, and even to funding clinical services. We cannot have good hospitals without money because we don't have the money to pay the human resource. Yeah, it takes a lot of money to pay people. It probably costs more than the discovery of medicine to develop a high quality human resource. So these are questions that bother us, like what is the role of money in health and human development? And how can we work together with other professionals in an interdisciplinary fashion in a university like this one to make sure there is sufficient money for science, for research, development, and money for health? And so we, we found that <clears throat> because now we are living in the 21st century where technology is possible, we have to agree to work with this technology and we have been working over the last one year and created a cryptocurrency specifically for working in life science and health. And we call it Ubricoin. This is short for Ubrica. Ustawi, Ustawi Biomedical Research Innovation and Industrial Centers of Africa. And we created 10 billion units of Ubricoin, which we now can use to support financially the entire value chain of health from education itself, basic education, primary schools, through to university education, and maybe post-university education, where stuff like manufacturing occurs, in industrial development. By working with cryptocurrency, we now are, we are able to build a whole new ecosystem of science that doesn't rely on politicians. We should say, there is no day we need to go to China to borrow money to build a road for us, or even to go to wherever, because there is no nation that ever developed by getting money from outside itself. So, I never developed. Because as soon as you go outside to get money from other people, we immediately become the slaves of that nation. And of course, infectious diseases take control. They kill small babies. You know, pneumonia, diarrhea, and stuff like that. Pneumonia and diarrhea does not kill babies of rich people. <laughs> it kills babies of people without money. Even malaria, because we can pick it up and treat it before it becomes a severe condition. So right now, for your generation, think outside medicine. I think the way we have structured medicine in the past is that we wait for people to get sick. They come to see us with disease. Right? Right now, we have the technology to detect diseases before they even happen to leave one family, so we don't have epidemics. 
what we have in, in TB is almost sort of a pandemic affecting a lot of people in the world. And then you see the fifth leading cause of death in the nation. That is a significant disease. It is not possible to do anything to TB without thinking deeply about money. So what we have done with the Ubricoin, we created 10 billion units and allocated a lot of Ubricoin, like 2 billion, to university research and development programs. So all of you are eligible to receive that money so that you can focus on working on basic scientific research about tuberculosis, applied research about tuberculosis, figure out how over the next 10 years we are going to create a leading production line of all, of all anti-TB uh, treatments in the nation, and it's quite possible. And then we, we convert Kenya into an epicenter for discovery, because discovery itself takes a lot of money. Epicenter for discovery, and lead the nation into stopping these wild diseases that affect our people and kill them because they don't have money. So for now, we are helping people to understand that money, and how do you work with digital currencies? What is it? Now you see countries like Japan, they have made Bitcoin national currency. So don't let anyone in this world tell you that digital money is illegal. It's not illegal. It's like WhatsApp. WhatsApp is not illegal. What WhatsApp has done is to enable you to communicate with people in distant places without spending extra money. Now what digital currency has done is to come and bring us the freedom of money. That freedom of money is for people in professionals, professional people. It is not money for political work, you know? It's not money, because it's money that's created right here, we don't have to go to another country to get the money. We have within us the power to stop TV completely cold on its feet, without having to go to other places to look for the money, because the money is within us. And for those interested to learn about money like that, we can help them learn about cryptocurrency wallets, how it work, how money is transferred and how it's shared. Other countries are very much ahead of us. They, they are already 10 years. And of course, we must embrace the science of money if we are going to do anything about the health system that is really suffering in this country. So, uh, we, for those who agree to do the experiments we're doing right now with this money, we give them 10 thousand units of Ubricoin, free of charge. And then we start working together over the next one year. And we're going to see the effect of money on health and human development. In particularly, what would it do to improve the social status of people? What do they do to improve the economic conditions of people? Because how money is created in a nation determines the social outcomes of a society. Yeah? How money is issued also determines the, the economic outcome of the people. So you have money in Kenya today being created by commercial banks. And when a commercial bank creates money, it creates money by giving you a loan. This means that if you're a research scientist and you don't have money, you cannot get a loan. Why would the bank give you a loan? Say you go to Kenya Commercial Bank. Kenya Commercial Bank is not going to loan you money to do your research because already you don't have money. Loans are only given to people with money because that's how money is created in a nation. So if you went, say you're a medical student, you're starting interesting discoveries, and you want to have money to do it, you cannot get it from the current financial system in the nation. Then money is only issued to people with money because the bank Money is created by the action of creating loans, and then who gets the loans? Only people with money. This is why, in the present economic structure of the nation, we are never, it's never possible for us to come out of that, for that set system or setup. Unless, and of course, because that money is not enough, our big leaders go outside the nation to look for money, and then they pocket a lot of it. Yeah? Then education ends up suffering. We are not going to stop any disease when the education system is suffering. We say, let us embrace new technology. We create alternative money, money that is issued by the computer system itself. It's not issued to the rich people. It's issued to the people who need it, the people who have the promise to bring new knowledge into the marketplace. People who have the promise 
to use that knowledge to develop companies which can create a lot of jobs. People who use that knowledge to create new molecules that can help us to fight the diseases we have. People who can use that knowledge to stop problems in the villages where there's no money. Like this whole thing of agriculture and technology university has a lot of technical knowledge that we can use to improve the lives of people in communities throughout the nation. That's all I would like to say, that let us bring money to the centerpiece. I think that money has to be taught as a subject in school of medicine. Because there's no point of <laughs> studying all these diseases and then you're treating patients without money. What is that? And of course, when you are asking for the patient history, it is very important for you to know, as a doctor, where does this patient get his money from? Not when they come to the hospital, we detain them. Now, if you detain someone with TB, what is going to do? Yeah? And of course, we refuse to give him food in a hospital. That's what we do. It's evil. It is, yeah, isn't unconscionable. That we are, with all the education, because we know so much biology, we know exactly what that TB is going to do to the patient if we don't give him food. Because food is the, la the first line of defense for people with chronic diseases. We deny them food, we get them sick. That's what we are doing here in the practice outside. Well, when the patient dies, we get, we take the title of the land so that the rest of the family can suffer more. And as a hospital, we sell that land. That is not the lesson of money we want to study at the university. We want to study money as a treatment of diseases. Yeah? And we bring money to the center of medical education. Because medical education without knowledge of money is unproductive. We cannot produce health. Because health is produced. Like the way you produce fruits and mangoes, health is produced. We cannot produce health among people without money. So, this is a long discussion, we can do this later, but let me invite you to join the cryptocurrency movement in this world. Let us bring money to the side of people. Let us bring money to the side of science. Let us bring money to the side of professions. Let us work on money. Get the guys in computer science school. They know how to create money. Let us say money is not created out there at Tel Aviv. Money is created with education and knowledge. So, let's do it. Thank you so much.